Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, we're going to go over Serve Pro Nation, what it is and why you'll want it. Now, first, this video is courtesy of Essential Tennis. Thank you so much, guys, for allowing me to use this video. You can uh, subscribe to Essential Tennis by clicking their link in the description below. All right, so we got Isner here, and I want to start this video at this point right here. I want you to go out and film yourself. And I want you to look when the racket is above your head. So we can see this, right? This is the top of his head. When the racket is higher than head level, what your racket looks like. The whole reason we want a continental grip is because it gets us in this position, which allows us to lead with the front edge. And we can hit spin, we can hit top spin, we can, we can hit slice. We can also pronate and be able to hit flat. This position, this yellow circle position is what you want on all your serves, where you're leading up with the edge of the racket. Now, the racket path can be a little different on all those serves, but what the racket looks like leading up toward the ball is really the same. This position called on edge, if you're right-handed, it points the strings off to the left. So as you are going up to the ball, you almost have to feel like the ball is an apple, right? So here's the apple, and you've got an axe, and you're going to chop the apple in half. That supinated position where the palm and the strings are facing off to the left, forearm, everything's facing left, you will then rotate, which is called pronating, and you will start to pronate in order to get your strings to face forward. This is the fastest way to move the racket. When you hit the ball, I mean, if you ever hurt yourself or slam your fingers in a car door or slam your fingers in a, in a drawer and you go, ow, and you start shaking your hand, even if you do that right now, you go, ow, and you shake your hand like, oh my gosh, that really hurt. That's you pronating to move your hand fast. So that's this move as he's hitting the ball. And when you rotate to get to contact, and we'll go a little more in detail here, but He's rotating. Well, the body motion tends to stay in motion, right? So he's he begins pronating, and now his racket continues to pronate, and now his strings are facing off to the right. So when the racket is higher than his head, his racket goes from facing to the left to facing to the right. So his racket right now is basically traveling 180 degrees, and it's rotating 180 degrees. It's traveling 180 degrees by going up and then coming down again. And that's, you know, so look at the path his racket's taking. And notice the racket, by the way, goes to the inside of his hand. Very important for leverage. You want the racket not to be in a straight line with your arm, but to be slightly to the inside of your, of your hand. And the racket not only travels 180, but it rotates 180. So when the racket is higher than your head, and this is why I make all these videos, I want you to know what you should be looking for when you film your serve. When the racket is higher than head level, the racket should be on edge prior to contact and on edge after you hit. On edge simply meaning if I had a coin, I could balance the coin on the edge of the racket and I could do the same thing here as well. I can balance a coin on the end of the racket. Here, his strings are facing off to the right. Now, let's talk specifics here. What we are doing is we are taking the back edge, the bottom edge of the racket, which is actually the left edge, and we are turning to be able to square the racket up to contact. Now, I talked about the 180 degrees that the racket rotates. So the strings facing off to the left, and now the strings facing off to the right. And he actually over, not over rotates, but he's so flexible, he actually goes past 180. But let's just say 180. That's really all that matters. So his strings, whoops, let me redraw that. His strings are facing off to the right. So that would be zero degrees, and this is 180. Okay, so his strings are changing 180 degrees. What we want to know is what angle is contact? So let's go back to zero here. So here's zero, and this would be five degrees, 10 degrees, you know, 20, de 20 degrees, that his strings are rotating, right? So his strings now are facing up like this. Contact is going to be less than 90, meaning when you strike the ball, you want your right edge to be ever so slightly in front of the left edge. So yes, we are rotating strings to the left and strings to the right, but people get confused. They're like, how do you hit a slice serve doing this? Wouldn't you want to rotate the other way and supinate as you hit? No, no, no. You get side spin 
or top spin or even be able to hit a flat serve on all those serves. You want this right edge, this edge ever so slightly in front. That is what puts the side spin on the ball. And yes, you want side spin even on a flat serve. It's just that it's going to be more squared up to contact uh, on a flat serve, where on a slice serve, you're going to lead a little more with the edge. So this is a pretty flat serve. So at contact, if we have to give it a number, remember, this is zero and this is 180, where his strings are pointing. His racket has rotated, and I'm going to give this the number, uh, here's contact, I'm going to give that the number 85, right? So it's, it's here's zero, this would be 45 degrees, and here's 85. And that the racket doesn't square up until now, where the left edge has caught up perfectly with the right edge. So we're going to call that 90, and then this is 180. But that's after contact. We want to hit the ball with the right edge leading slightly in front. That's what's going to give us the spin, and it's going to give us the control that we look that we look for. If you're hitting a slice serve, you want to think of still at 80, so that like where a slice serve, you'd be hitting like that. Where, where the back edge hasn't caught up yet. So you stay on edge longer, leading with the edge of the racket, leading with this edge of the racket longer. That's going to give more of an angle, and then you, then you really get the ball to spin. I want you to go out and film yourself, and I want you, and you can practice this now, like literally grab your racket and think of this. As you go up to the ball with your continental grip, you must get your racket on its edge. And then as you rotate, you rotate the left edge, if you're right-handed, the left edge is right here. You take the left edge, which is the bottom edge, rotating it into contact. When you hit the ball, the right edge is still slightly in front. And then after contact, there your racket squares up to, to 90. And then it keeps rotating. And now you're at 180. As I mentioned, look at his strings. He pronates so much. He actually goes past 180. And he has a tremendous amount of flexibility where his strings, like just try to get into that position. It's not easy to do. But he's so flexible. One of the many reasons why he has an incredible serve. And then his follow through goes down on his left side. And look at this serve. It's a right to a, you know, right to the guy's body kicking up over his back, backhand shoulder. But lead up with the edge of the racket on your serve. Take the bottom edge and rotate it forward as you are going up to contact. You want there to be an angle between the arm and the racket as a way to powerfully rotate. You don't want the racket going straight up over your hand. You want the racket to pass to the inside of your hand. That is actually the fastest way to move your racket. And to help explain how you can get side spin when you're pronating, the ball's only on the strings for four milliseconds. So it's not like the racket is angle is changing as the ball's touching your racket. So when you contact the ball, the right edge should be slightly in front. And that's if you're hitting a slice serve, hitting a flat serve, hitting a topspin serve. You want the right edge of the racket in front as you're striking the ball. And then after contact, that's when the racket squares up. And then way after, that's when your strings face off to the right. But this is how you get spin. This is how you have tremendous racket speed. Look, I like to tell people that all of the swing, right? Everything you do from the knee bend to knocking off the birthday hat, bringing that elbow forward, you can see his his violent elbow movement. Look at his elbow making this move. Watch his elbow follow that. Elbow going forward and up. So the body's going up and the racket's getting thrown down. All of that is like shaking up a champagne bottle. But this pronation is like uncorking it. So if you shake it up and you have a great motion, but then you uncork it and you pronate properly, it's a huge explosion like you're celebrating with a, with a champagne bottle and you shake it up and uncork it like you'll see like Nadal do after he wins a, a, a big tournament. And, you know, some of the tournaments, they take champagne bottles and they spray it. That's kind of the idea. Work on getting on edge prior to hitting the ball. And then take the bottom edge, rotate it to contact, but at contact, you still want the right edge in front. You want to throw the left edge forward, but the right edge is still in front slightly at contact. And then you keep rotating and look that after you hit the ball, that while the racket is still above your head, your strings face off to the right. Again, this is for right-handers. And then you'll still follow through down on your left side. You work on these ideas, and there is no 